On April 8, 2023, the New Mexico National Guard and the New Mexico Department of Veterans Services presented the 2023 Bataan Remembrance Day Ceremony in downtown Santa Fe. The annual event takes place at the base of the Eternal Flame Monument, which is in front of the Bataan Memorial Building. The building, the Eternal Flame, and the ceremony itself all serve as a tribute to 1,800 members of the New Mexico National Guard who found themselves, and America, suddenly thrust into World War II. The men from the New Mexico National Guard's 200th Coast Artillery Regiment had arrived in the Philippines in the fall of 1941 to provide support for American troops already stationed there due to Japan's increased aggressive rhetoric and actions in Asia. But three months later, the lives of these New Mexicans and the lives of Americans back home suddenly changed forever. Just hours after Japan launched the December 7 surprise attack on the U.S. Navy base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, Japan also launched what few Americans know about, but what historians often refer to as the other Pearl Harbor attack, a surprise attack on the Philippines. The 200th Coast Artillery Regiment suddenly found itself in a war. It was quickly split to form a second unit, the 515th Coast Artillery Regiment. The two units then joined the rest of the American Filipino soldiers in a fight to save not only their own lives, but the very existence of the Philippines itself. But the better equipped Japanese invasion force proved to be too much for the inadequately armed Americans and Filipinos. After a spirited four-month defense, the Americans and Filipinos retreated to and were eventually pinned down on the Bataan Peninsula. They were out of ammunition, food, and medical supplies. Many men were injured or were suffering from malaria. Everyone was on the verge of starvation. Sensing an impending annihilation of his troops, U.S. Army Major General Edward P. King, the commander of the American and Filipino forces on the Bataan Peninsula, ignored direct orders from his own superiors and made a gut-wrenching decision. On April 9, 1942, Major General King surrendered himself, his fellow officers, and the 75,000 men under his command to the Japanese. He gave the order even though his men would have rather fought until death. The surrendered 75,000 American and Filipinos were then forced by their Japanese captors to march more than 60 torture-filled miles to brutal prison camps on what came to be known as the Bataan Death March. Along the way, many prisoners perished. Many were killed for simply stopping to rest or for helping a fellow struggling prisoner. Those lucky enough to survive imprisonment would not be freed for another three and a half years until August 2, 1945, when Japan surrendered to end the war. By then, only about 32,000 POWs were alive. Of the initial 1,800 New Mexico National Guardsmen, only 900 were left. We are here to reflect on the time when many New Mexicans and other brave Americans and Filipinos perished on the Bataan Peninsula. This year, by mutual agreement between the National Guard, DVS, and family members of Bataan survivors, the 2023 Bataan Remembrance Day ceremony was held on Saturday, April 8, out of deference to Easter falling on the April 9 surrender anniversary date this year. Good morning. I am First Sergeant Manuel Armijo. I am the First Sergeant for Charlie Battery, 200 Coast Artillery. It's 9 April 1942 as one of the older men here in the Philippines. I was supposed to sail home back on 10 December. Obviously, that didn't happen. I'd miss my dear Francis. Oh, how I wish I was home in New Mexico right now. I haven't had a chance to even see my baby girl, Loretta, right? I just received order to surrender down from General King. My soldiers want to keep fighting, and I'm the one who has to tell them we must surrender. I'm worried about how my men will be treated by the Japanese. Good morning. I am Staff Sergeant Ernest Montoya, service number 208-42724. I am an Alpha Battery, 515th Coast Artillery. It's 9 April 1942, and I'm no longer on Bataan. 
I am on Corridor fighting alongside the 4th Marines. Ten more days until my 22nd birthday. The Japs have been shelling us non-stop for days. I'm sure they will run out of ammunition soon. They surely can't keep this up forever. I wonder how the others from New Mexico are doing back on Baton. Good morning. I am Corporal Jack Aldrich, service number 20843488. I am in Headquarters Battery 200 Coast Artillery. It is 9 April 1942. I was one of the last ones from the 200 to get to Camp Caban. Yesterday we got orders to move. The gun battery started destroying their weapons. We loaded the regimental records and our barracks bags onto a truck which took off at top speed. I don't expect to be seeing them again. We will now strike the national colors, fold, and lay them in place of honor. We will then raise the white flag. Order! Arms! Raise the white flag! We will now conduct a reading of the stations. This tradition dates back to 1946. Baton veterans traditionally conducted this part of the ceremony. In years prior, we have passed that responsibility to three of our modern day veterans who have served our country. The Baton descendants participating in this year's ceremony are Mr. Ed Gurola, nephew of Agapito E. Silva, Mr. Alan Overmeyer, son of Bill Overmeyer, and Mr. Agapito Silva, son of Agapito E. Silva. Read the stations. Place this light on the altar as a symbol of our undying love for our fellow comrades. I place this light as a symbol of purity and may each future generation emulate the unselfish devotion to duty of those whom we honor here today. Place this light, our last token of affection, which leaves an empty space in the hearts of those they left behind. I represent the empty space, the dead and those missing. I am the spirit of those who cannot be here. I am the memory of an American boy who was once much like you. I loved life, I laughed, Pride. I had a family, a mother, a sister, and a brother. I had a school, a church, a church in which I worshipped the same God as you. I played football, ate hot dogs and ice cream, and was caught more than once stealing the neighbor's apples. Perhaps all this can be summed up by saying that I was an American boy. I worked in the drugstore, the factory, the bank. I was happy, but there were those who would take away that happiness, those who cast an envious eye at the American boy and the American way of life. My dad often told me that anything worth having was worth fighting for. I believed that. Today I still believe it. We who are no longer did not die in vain. We died for a cause, for the freedom of the greatest nation on the face of the earth. The torch of freedom is in your hands. Keep her free forever and ever. God bless America, our home, sweet home. I will now read the list of Baton veterans laid to rest since April. 2022. Don Nano Lucero, Bravo Battery, 200th Coast Artillery, passed away September 16th, 2022, in Augusta, Maine. Present, home!
this uh, ceremony is so important. It's both a remembering and an honoring of those who served so courageously on behalf of New Mexico and our country. For the first time, we've had descendants of Bataan veterans directly involved in this ceremony. Um, and I thought it was time. And we had a conversation with, with a few of you, and I asked you what your opinion was. And again, resoundingly, you said, absolutely, we want to be a part of this ceremony. Uh, and so thank you so much for being a part of it. I think it, I hope that to you it adds what, what, I, what I intended it for it to be, is a much more personal ceremony. So let me read the proclamation from the governor. Uh, from the state of New Mexico, the executive office, the proclamation reads, Whereas the United States is drawn into World War II when Japan launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, and other locations, including the Philippines, where New Mexico National Guard uh, members had arrived several months earlier. And whereas the members of the 200th and 515th Coastal Artillery Units gallantly defended the Philippines despite being severely outnumbered and inadequately supplied. And whereas 1,800 members of these two New Mexico units were among the more than 75,000 American and Filipino soldiers who were surrendered by the U.S. command to Japanese invaders of the Philippines on April 9, 1942. And whereas the surrender order came over objections of the soldiers themselves who preferred to fight until the end rather than surrender. And whereas the surrender order came as the American and Filipino forces were pinned down on the Bataan Peninsula, Japanese captures then forced most of the surrendered troops to march 60 jungle-filled miles on what became known as the Bataan Death March to brutal imprison imprisonment camps. And whereas many Americans were tortured in, or killed en route, and many more died in the camps, and whereas when Japan surrendered to the United States three and a half years later, fewer than half of the 1,800 New Mexicans of the two, from the 200th and 515th Coastal Artillery Regiments were alive. Those who survived drew upon extraordinary physical, mental, and emotional strength to do so. And whereas, although these heroes went on to live productive lives after returning home, many did so while suffering physically and emotionally from their ordeal. And whereas April 9, 2023 marks the 81st anniversary of the fall of Bataan. Now therefore, I, Michelle Lujan Grisham, Governor of the State of New Mexico, Dear heart, dear, hereby proclaim April 9th, 2023 as Bataan Veterans uh, Remembrance Day throughout the state of New Mexico. The challenge we all have before us is to ensure we will always continue to honor the legacy of our New Mexico brave Bataan heroes who gave so much. Some paid the ultimate sacrifice of losing their lives and others with years of their lives fighting and struggling to survive while enduring starvation and torture. I cordially ask that we all continue to share, to tell the stories to our kids, grandkids, school kids, and as many folks as we can of these courageous men. The fourth and final speaker at the ceremony was Margaret Garcia, daughter of former Bataan Death March survivor, U.S. Army Corporal Evangelisto Evans Garcia. Corporal Garcia was a member of the 200th Coast Artillery Regiment Battery H who passed away in 2011 at age 97. After surviving the Bataan Death March, Garcia was one of the many POWs who were sent by hell ships to work in factories or mines back in Japan. For Garcia, this meant hard labor at the Fukuoka Mines Camp 17. Like the POWs back in the Philippines, Garcia and the other prisoners in Japan were only freed when Japan surrendered. When dad came home, from war with his raging demons, his mother gently said, son, it only hurts you when you have hate for the Japanese. Margaret remembered this when just a couple of months before this ceremony, she and a family representative from six other World War II POWs who were imprisoned in Japan were invited by Japanese officials to visit their country on a special goodwill trip. They were invited to visit the place where their loved ones were imprisoned. Margaret got to visit the Fukuoka Mine, Camp 17, where her dad was held. The POW barracks are long gone, 
but the grounds where they're located are still open and used for coal storage. We visited that site and I walked up the road to the open gates of that vast coal storage area. Knowing that our dads walked that road every morning three miles to that hellhole of the mine, then back for two and a half years was very emotional to say the least. I found the Japanese people kind and generous, respectful, very curious about our history and the abuse our fathers were subject to as prisoners of war. I left Japan with a renewed heart and truly great respect and fondness for the people. I plan on returning to Japan someday and I do pray that I have the compassion and the courage to lay flowers and a wreath at Nagasaki's and Hiroshima's Ground Zero. We will now raise the colors in celebration of the sacrifice these men made. Priest, eh? Pump! Let us pray, Father. We, uh, we ask that the living legacy and the conquering character of the time veterans find its ways to the hearts of our today's children and the grandchildren of New Mexico. Thank you for the seeds of Evan Garcia and all the Baton veterans uh, with their conquering character that has taken root in their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and God willing, future children that will contribute to the greatness of New Mexico. With your help, Father, and the diligence of our leaders in the New Mexico National Guard, may the Baton brothers' DNA chain of, uh, of an overcoming spirit never be broken, and thank you for the blessings we will receive this Easter weekend as family gather across New Mexico. Siempre adelante and amen. <laughs>